Welcome to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. My name is Stephen Katz. I'm a marriage and family therapist practicing here on Oahu. And today we have with us again, Dr. Tomas Cumming, the founder of Mindful Matters in Kailua right here on Oahu. Dr. Cummings is a psychologist, a yoga teacher, a musician, I saw, mm -hmm. and over the past decade, there has been a phenomenal increase in the research on the effectiveness of mindfulness practices in treating anxiety, depression, and a whole range of mental physical illnesses. Dr. Cummings strives to make mindfulness accessible to the average person. Welcome again, Dr. Cummings. Thank you, Steve. A pleasure to be here. So, for those that don't know yet, what does that mean, mindfulness meditation? Mindfulness means paying attention to the internal and external goings-on on purpose without judgment. Paying attention to what? Paying attention to the internal experience of thoughts internal, and like feelings. Inside yes. my head. Thoughts and feelings, yes. And to the external occurrences that are happening. Noises, sounds. Sounds, statements by others. So what's the difference between that and just going about your daily life? Most people go about their daily life kind of half sleepwalking, not very conscious. Like stream of thought is going on and oh, I've got all these bills and oh, my kid is struggling with this or that in school and I'm worried about this president and the security of the world and so forth. And they're not fully paying attention to what's going on internally, externally, and doing it without judgment. Judgment is categorizing it as good or bad. Just kind of, you, you know, so dichotomously and without any other consideration. Just Would it be fair to say it's, it's paying attention to what's going on now in the present moment yes, rather than the, the past or the future? Yes, in the present moment, from moment to moment paying attention to the in internal experience, thoughts and feelings, and external happenings. So when you say judgment. paying attention, you mean just like noticing it? Noticing. Not saying this is good and that's bad, just noticing right. it. Right, not judging, just noticing it. In fact, one of my teacher's teachers said, the happiness is in the noting. For example, mm. Your spouse says something with a sharp tone of voice. Mm. If you weren't mindful, you'd just probably bark back at her. You know? Right. I already did it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but if you're mindful, you go, okay, she's a little bit irritated here. You note it, and you note, and I feel it kind of contagiously infecting me. I'm getting a little irritated by that tone of voice. But I have a choice now. I don't have to re respond in kind. Ah. Uh. So it's kind of taking back your own power. In a way, what, what people say who meditate regularly is it gives you a little buffer of time. You don't react anymore. You respond according to your goals and principles rather than just reacting kind of, you know, emotionally. Because anger, irritability is very contagious in that way. But it gives you a little buffer so you think, you note, well, she seems a little irritated. I feel myself getting a little uptight. What's the best way to respond to this? Calm her down. No, honey, I already did. I got it. It's all good. I'll keep you posted. Calm her down? Yeah. What about calming me down? That's part of what meditation does on a regular basis. Practices like meditation, yoga, and instantly cardio exercise all contribute to the generation of the neurotransmitters like cannabinoids and endorphins and serotonins that keep us calm and cool and collected and yet awake and present. Mm -hmm. So you use it often in your practice to treat people with lots of anxiety? Yes. All right, so let's, I, I'm very like, yeah. I like to use examples. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, all right. So you brought it up. I'll go with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm very uh, anxious sometimes mm -hmm. lately mm -hmm. that given the current state of political affairs, there is there going to be riots. There's going to be blood in the streets. Mm -hmm. it, it really, you know, I'm having nightmares about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What can I do about that? 
Well, I, I would first, you know, ask you a lot of questions to get you to flesh that out. So I really get inside your experience of it and really understand that and you feel understood. Yeah, so I was watching some old yeah. movies about the demonstrations in the 60s yeah. and I, I saw people, I saw that's what was happening. Yeah. And I think that the country is divided like it was yeah. then, maybe even more so. Yeah, yeah. And, would, you know, this so guy I, wants to build a wall, people are going to blow it up. He's got yeah. hotels, people are going to blow them up. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and it, it makes me crazy. Yeah, yeah, and so I, I would start by just acknowledging and, and, and empathically validating your experience, and then I'd outline a treatment plan. And part of that treatment plan would be to teach you how to examine your thoughts, and first session, if not second session, teach you exercises that you'll practice on a daily basis that calm you down, that combat the anxiety, that teach you skills that you practice regularly to relax yourself while being awake and present, while being mindful. Okay. What is that? What do these exercises look mm. like? In mindfulness-based stress reduction (MBSR), a system of therapy that was designed in a for a group setting, eight weeks, three mm -hmm. hours. John Kabat-Zinn uh, yeah, stuff. Yeah, John Kabat-Zinn started this with Saki Sandrelli. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I will apply it in an individual setting where I teach you these, these, these self-centering, or we call them self-regulation exercises, mm -hmm. some of which are formal meditation, others are informal practices. So starting with um, the relaxation training exercises, there's a breath-focused meditation, probably the most common across the centuries and across the globe, across cultures, where we focus our attention on the breath without controlling it. And every time we notice our mind wanders, we bring it back to the sensation of the breath, the real and very present sensation of the breath, either in the belly or in the upper lip in the nostrils. So noticing the air going past my yeah, upper yeah. lip. And focusing on it. Just focusing on it in a very calm and relaxed way. How brain. do you focus on that? Well, you just tune into it, sense it, feel it. It's very real, it's tangible. Because it's very difficult to empty your mind, like they say in Zen. Unless you've grown up doing that, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we attempt to focus the mind on one thing. Mm -hmm. like and that's our anchor, like the breath. Mm -hmm. And when you notice that you're not thinking about your breath anymore, mm -hmm. without judgment, you just go, oh, back to the breath. Kind of like nice, gentle parenting. Oh, not back to the breath. Yeah, but I got all this work to do. You'll get to it later, right now, on the breath. Not now, later. Focus on And then when I get tired of paying attention to my upper lip, I can notice my belly getting bigger yeah. when I breathe in? Yeah, when you breathe in, the belly expands. When you let go, it re returns. And very subtle sensations, but as you tune into them, they're very real, they're very present. Okay, so to play yeah. patient here. Yeah. Yes, but doctor, that is not gonna change the world. No, in fact, there's nothing you and I can do in here to change the world except writing letters to the editor and being active and as citizens and voting. You're here. It's very frustrating to me. I'm sure that's very frustrating, but you're here to change you, so it doesn't affect you in I'm such fine. a negative it's way. I'm fine. It's the government that screwed up. Uh, well, you're here to see me because you're not fine. I'm a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you could, you know, for right. the other stuff, uh, you, you go to fine. community I'm, organizations. I'm not happy. Yeah. I'm not happy. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying I could be happy with the way things are? Uh, you might be 10% happier with the practice of these, is what someone that's figured out. Yeah. Yeah. 10%? Yeah, 10%. Uh, but it's better than drinking or smoking dope. Because this happiness is solid, it's yours. And many people oh, find more than 10%, but come on, let's get real, it's really hard to measure happiness. Right. But there's a book called 10% Happier. You know, uh. By a, a former news anchor who had a panic attack on live TV. And he decided to stop doing drugs and decided to go into mindfulness-based uh, meditation retreat, and it really benefited him. He wrote a book on it. And he called it 10% Happier. Mm. And he, he, he claims, he's been interviewed a lot, Dan Harris his name is, mm -hmm. and he's been interviewed a lot, and he says, meditation has a PR problem. Too many people think that it's patchouli-scented, um, <laughs> 
dreadlock wearing uh -huh. people. But you know what? There's been decades of research now uh, in a very controlled setting, MBSR. Mm -hmm. Eight week programs with plumbers and teachers and mothers and fathers, average Joes, benefiting immensely from this. Yeah. In terms of anxiety, depression, but also in terms of all kinds of health conditions, heart, yeah, people heart used disease, to treat pain. high blood pressure, pain, yeah. even psoriasis. <laughs> even psoriasis. You're just throwing that in. No, that's true. Because the, the it's, outbreaks it's of, of connected the to anxiety is related to stress and anxiety. Ah. Yeah. So breath focus is one of them. Another is where you do a body scan. Most people do this lying down, but often they'll fall asleep. So you yeah, do it I sitting can't. up. Yeah, I, I fall asleep. But you focus on certain muscle groups and relax them one at a time. Yeah. You do a full body scan. It can take as long as 40 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another technique among the formal meditation practices with MBSR. So breath focus. Uh, body center or body scan. Another one is focus on, focusing on the ambient sounds without getting what carried. I hear. Yeah, just what do you in hear? In Bird song, dog barking uh -huh. in the distance, you hear it. You, but you don't get attached to any of it. You don't analyze it. We so if you can hear conversation, thing. don't pay attention to the yeah, meaning of just, the words? You just note it. Talking. Oh, I hear somebody talking. Yeah, talking. And then you let it go. Talking, dog barking, wind. But, Bird song. All right, so in my practice that I attempt, mm -hmm. mostly poorly mm -hmm. in terms because I don't get around to it, mm -hmm. is there a trick that people can use to keep the practice going? Because, uh, you know, we all start all these things, yeah, diets and yeah. this and that. You're talking about basic behavioral psychology. Yeah. There are many tricks. One is setting a specific time to do it. Most people find it's easiest to do first thing in the morning. Right, before, before anything gets in the way. Before the day comes in, before you look at your smartphone, before you look at your email. Right. Get up, use the toilet, maybe coffee, and then sit. And there's a posture to doing this because you sit for longer and longer periods of time. Mm. Why do we sit? So we lay down, we fall asleep. Right. Because you're getting very relaxed. Yeah. Two things are going on in meditation. Even the Dalai Lama addresses this. Yeah. One is you're getting into a very relaxed state that's very restorative, very yeah. healthy for us, boosts our immune system, slows our heart rate, lowers our blood pressure, improves digestion, improves many aspects of health. You get into that state. The second thing that's happening is you're exercising what we might call a mental muscle of concentration. Mm. And the more you do it, the better you get. Practicing focusing. Focusing, yeah. Because the mind wants to wander. It's like a puppy. It's right, on training. Right, yeah, yeah. Everyone, the buzzword is I'm ADHD. Well, we're all, right. it's an ADHD culture. Right. Bam, bam, bam. Camera angles changing constantly. How often is this one changing? <laughs> <laughs> changing so um, you know our culture teaches us to not focus very long mm -hmm. you know so it's not easy to learn but the more we practice the better we get at it and like I said there's been a lot of research done on super meditators but a lot wait, of research are wait. lately yes sir talking about attention deficit disorder yeah. we have to go to a break we'll oh. be right back don't touch the mouse Hello, my name is Crystal. Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced attitude in life. Join me. Aloha, my name is Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider. More than a third of Hawaii's population live in some form of association, and our show is all about educating board members and owners about their responsibilities and obligations and providing solutions for a great association. You can watch me live on Thursdays, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. each week. Aloha. Welcome back to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. I'm still with Dr. Tom Mas, Tomas Cummings. And uh, talking about attention deficit disorder, uh, what, what are we talking about? 
<laughs> we, <laughs> we were talking. Super meditators. We were talking about. There's been a fair amount of research done on super meditators in the 80s and 90s, but that doesn't apply to our general population. Why not? Because they live a special life of growing up as a llama, as uh -huh. a monk and then a llama, to meditate in a very calm environment that's conducive to meditating. Mm -hmm. So mindfulness practices have been developed to apply it to the average person, the average Joe. And in a lot of my work, I teach people how to do this and we troubleshoot and I have all these handouts to troubleshoot. We practice it, I guide them. They can go online, anyone can go to my website, Mindful uh, Matters Kailua, and download me guiding you through these practices. Really? Yep. That's cool. Yeah, you can download do it and listen to them live. Mindful Matters Kailua. Yeah. Wow. Matters, How long is that? that? Well, one of them, the breath focus is about 15 minutes. Uh, the body scans, much longer. And then I have one called the wave that's kind of a hybrid between a body scan and a breath focus. And there are three variations of the wave, A, B, and C, and that's about 15 minutes total. That's wonderful. Yeah. Free. Uh, yeah, sure. Wow, that's great. Now, I should mention that if someone has anxiety, standard of care tells us, teach that person these exercises right away uh -huh. and guide them and get them started with it right away. If they have depression, don't, because when we're really depressed, moderate to severe, uh, it's, it's almost impossible to meditate. You have to use what we call behavioral activation to lift the depression. Then we teach them and get them practicing the mindfulness meditation to prevent relapse. So what do you do to lift the depression? Well, it's called behavioral activation. The eyes have it, I say. They need to socialize, exercise, cardio, solarize, get a little sun, uh, spiritualize, whatever your philosophical or spiritual path is, engage in it. But it's so Humorize hard. <laughs> and uh, realize you can't do it alone. You need help. You need a psychotherapist. You need uh, family and friends to help you and pull you off the couch. Get away from the mouse and the TV. Stop watching Doomsday TV and, and get out in life. What about pills? Uh, someone's severely depressed. It's almost, why? Wow, it's a long, hard haul to get off, and therapy's not going to be very effective and without the help of that or herbs. That so help. sometimes they need some sometimes. medication. Yeah, and, and I tell people, if we hit on the right one, you know, it'll start to take effect in two weeks, and then you get the meditation, get the depression lifted, and the therapy going, mm -hmm. and the meditation going, then they can wean off of it slowly in three to six months, okay? So it's not necessary to somebody to stay on no. something for, for the rest some of people, their life? No. Yeah. So some people, For yes. a lot of people. Yeah. Some people, it really depends on how disciplined they can be in fighting the depression. In maintaining these eyes. Yeah, the, all the eyes and the meditation practice. Right. Once the depression lifts, you get meditation going and keep the therapy going, watching how you think and changing how you think. You prevent relapses. This is, uh, I'm, I'm kind of harping on this, I hope you don't mind, because it's personal for me and for my clients. Mm -hmm. It's that routine thing. So the, the first thing that you mentioned, which works for me too, for me it's like I do a, a, a running mm -hmm. slash meditation mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. um, I find it hard first thing in the morning. Yeah, first thing in the morning you go to, your ba go to the bathroom and make coffee. And then I check my email, which I probably shouldn't do. Yeah, it would be to nice right away. <laughs> to stick in some meditation before that. Yeah. And I know that if I could keep it going long enough. Uh, so how much time should a person who's just starting? I'd start with 10 minutes and work up. That's to, long for some people. Like I've done it with people in my look, office. They have 10 minutes to check their Instagram or Facebook. You know, it's, we all have 24 hours a day. And if you're suffering, you need to channel some of that time into getting well. Ten right, minutes. but then they want a guarantee. So, like if I knew, mm -hmm. as they say here locally, I love this expression, Garen's Babarans, Garen. <laughs> that doing this would decrease my suffering, mm -hmm. I would do it. Mm -hmm. I would do it religiously, mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's one of the things that keeps us from doing things that we well, think we're supposed yeah, to do. I, I think um, there's there's no ironclad guarantee on anything, even right. getting a car. Well, we're going to die right. and we're going to be charged so, taxes. So, you know, we have to just have some faith that it's worked for many people of many ages, of many cultures. And not only in the two decades of research now that comes from the, the America's top universities, but also in Europe and other mm -hmm. places around the world, but also just over the year, over the, uh, over millennia, mm -hmm. it's why people follow this path for peace of mind. You know? There's also other forms. I mean, some people. Mm -hmm. I was taught by in the Kabat-Zinn, Santorelli, that there's also uh, a walking meditation where exactly. you walk. Exactly. That's another one. Because sometimes walk. I find that easier because it's you, hard for me to sit still. Yeah, you walk very slowly. Yeah, very like mindfully. Really, like very take slowly. Very slowly. Ten minutes to walk across I, I the room. I coordinate it with my breath because I did Tai Chi for so many uh, years. You don't have to, but the point is you, most people will interlace their fingers and just let them rest there. Walk upright like we sit upright uh -huh. when we meditate. And you just really feel the weight shift, all the minute sensations in every step. And when you go to different types of Buddhist meditation centers, Vipassana being the closest mm -hmm. to MBSR, to mindfulness being, right. um, you'll s sit for 20 minutes, walk for 5 or 10. Sit for 20, walk for 5 or 10. I've, didn't, I've done 10 day retreats where you're doing that. You'll sit up to an hour towards the end of the retreat, and then you'll walk for 20, sometimes walk for a half hour. In fact, that's the first one we do in the morning. You get up and you walk before you've even eaten breakfast. Are these silent retreats? Yeah. You don't is talk. that an important part of it, you think? I think it is. Well, what, what is it? You become more that? contemplative. We're so analytical in our words. And it gets you out of this verbal world of thinking, thinking, talking, talking, analyze, analyze, judge, judge, judge. So you do it in silence, except for once a day when you meet with the teacher mm. and you ask questions, and he or she gives you guidance. And that can be a small group format, individual. It depends on the retreat. There's a great, Vipassana Hawaii is a great place to tap into in Hawaii. Where is that? It's based on the big island, but also on this island. And they have a lot of retreats at the uh, Palolo Zen Center. They uh -huh. have a good relationship with that that line of Buddhism, with the people there at Palolo Zen Center. Do you but sleep you go there? To, yeah, when you do yeah. an overnight yeah. retreat. Yeah. So they'll have three-day retreats, two days, and nine days, and seven days, so. Vipassana, Hawaii. I can, I can hear myself and other people saying, oh, but how am I going to take out three days of my life to do that, right? People do it all the time. <laughs> they just, they, so you take vacation. Right. It's a staycation. Very stay. Yeah, very stay. <laughs> like, don't move out of the chair, practically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What about, like, you know, what gets in the way sometimes people think they have to sit like a yoga with your in no, lotus no. position? No, when I go to these retreats, I, I've been to a couple of John Cabot's Inns ones designed yeah. for, for health professionals. Right. About 160 people. Yeah. Probably a third are sitting in chairs. Uh huh. The essence of the position is that you're sitting upright with relaxed shoulders, a natural curve in your lower back, mm -hmm. and your head is. The chin is parallel with the floor, mm -hmm. but you're not leaning against the back of the chair because then you start to slump, then your lower back curves the other way and it's bad posture. Mm -hmm. Another third, like myself, I'll sit in half lotus as mm -hmm. I practice more and more, I'll get into full lotus. But there's also ways, they call it uh, warrior pose or hero pose, mm -hmm. where your legs are underneath you and they put the pillows in between their legs. People will set up all kinds so of ways. So it's okay to be comfortable. It's okay to be, it's important to be comfortable. Right. And then you start to distinguish what's natural, just restlessness of the body, and what's like, this is really hurting. I yeah. gotta change, I gotta shift. <laughs> you know, this knee is going. So you, you start to learn your favorite position, and you'll see it's quite a bit of variety to it, but all with the upright, relaxed back. They call it a position of relaxed dignity. Mm. Yeah, and the eyes are either closed, so you can focus inward, because the eyes are very young easily distracted, easy misled by us, or just staring kind of 45 degrees at the floor, at nothing. Mm hmm Yeah. Like people that stare at a candle. Yeah. Yeah. 
Somebody mentioned, to, I mentioned meditation to somebody to me, to, I mentioned it to her today, and she said, well, I pray, is, is that okay? It's different. Prayer, prayer is good. Prayer uh -huh. is a practice of hope. Prayer can be a setting of intention. The difference, I like to quote Carlos Santana said uh -huh. this. The musician. Yeah, the musician. The guy who stopped doing drugs early on, like 1969, and mm. started following a, a teacher from India. And he said, when you sit down, get quiet, commune with God, and you talk to God and God listens, that's prayer. When you sit down, get quiet, commune with God, God talks and you listen, that's meditation. Wow. Yeah, so you, 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 you're quiet and still in both cases. With prayer, you're like, please help me with my mother and her illness, please help. Maybe it's a prayer of compassion for someone else. Maybe it's a pr prayer of, uh, of, of compassion for yourself. Maybe it's mm. a prayer, give me strength to endure my bad back, you know. Give me strength through this upcoming operation. You ask for help. Yeah. Or, and, and one, I've heard some scholars of different religions say there are three components to a prayer. This was a Muslim scholar. He said, the first component is giving thanks, gratitude mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. Allah. Mm -hmm. The second component is asking for strength and guidance. The third component is just being with God. So that could be likened to meditation. In, in Hebrew, being. it's hineni. I am here. I am here. Yeah. Whether it's I am here or God is here. Yeah. I am here. I and I. <laughs> same, same. Same, same. Yeah. And God is right yeah. here. Yeah. Well, I just got the notice that our time is about up. It seems like a very peaceful, beautiful place to stop again. Good. And uh, I just want to thank you so much for coming. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah. It's good to be here. Thanks, be Steve. Well. Be Aloha. well. Aloha. Join us next time for Shrink Wrap Hawaii. Aloha.